Hello, this is Eugene Morris with TheBrotherhoodOfGaming.com and what I wanted to do here was try to make an objective ranking of all the DCEU movies that have been released up to this point. Now the DCEU has had a very interesting history to say the least. It's had its ups and downs for sure. And while I do have a subjective feeling about the rankings of these films from worst to first, I wanted to try to do something as objective as possible by capturing as wide range of opinions as I possibly can to try to get a consensus of where these films lie uh, as far as popularity and success goes. Now I was watching this YouTuber named The Anti Trekker and he used this formula to rank all the Star Trek movies and I really liked it. So I wanted to apply them to the DCEU films. Now the way this formula works is that there are five categories. So what I did is I took these five categories and I ranked the movies from first to last. If a movie ends up in first place in a category it gets a total of eight points. If it ends up in second it gets seven third, it gets six, and so on and so forth. And then I told the points up and I was able to come to this list. Now the five categories that I'm using for this formula are one, the total worldwide box office gross, and then I'm using Rotten Tomatoes. Now I know a lot of people have a lot of issues with Rotten Tomatoes, and I do understand that, but it's still the most well-known aggregate site and it just gives a uh, just a weighted consensus of how the critics and audiences feel about a film. So I'm using both the Rotten Tomatoes critic score and Rotten Tomato audience score. Also, I'm using the Metacritic score and the Metacritic user score. I understand that Metacritic works slightly different from Rotten Tomatoes, uh, so that's the reason why I'm using both these sites. Again, the point of this formula is try to get as many opinions as possible and try to reach a consensus of where these films rank. Again, just another reminder, my own personal subjective list is different from the objective one. So, without further ado, here is my ranking of the eight DCEU films objectively. Please let me know what you think, and uh, let's begin. Coming in at number 8 at the very last spot is probably not a surprise to anyone, and that is Suicide Squad. With the formula that I'm using, the total number of points that a film can receive is 40. This film only managed to rank in 10 points. It came in last place in three categories, and second to last into another. The only category in which it did pretty well was in box office, and that's basically due to the hype that was going into this film. The movie grossed about $746 million, uh, which was enough to get into fourth place. Critics uh, really did not like this film. It got 27% on Rotten Tomatoes and 40% on Metacritic. As far as audiences go, it got 59% on Rotten Tomatoes, the only DCU movie to get a negative score in that category, and a 60% on the user score on Metacritic. Uh, this movie is a hot mess. Um, this is a prime example of uh, studio interference. After Batman v Superman didn't make the type of money that Warner Brothers was hoping for, they basically took this film away from David Ayer and really meddled with it. They essentially tried to remake the film through reshoots. So what you have is a film filled with plot holes, with things that just don't make sense, characters disappear. Yeah, it's just an example of studio executive arrogance that they can make a film better than a director can. That being said though, I do not hate this film. Um, in fact, on my own personal list, there's actually another DCU movie I score uh, lower than this one. I do think there is some good here in this film. I thought Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn was very good in this movie. Uh, I did like Jared Leto's take on the Joker. Uh, it's a shame that the majority of his scenes end up on the cutting room floor. And I also thought that Viola Davis did a very good job as Amanda Waller. So it's very obvious that the final product that we saw in theaters was not what David Ayers intended. Um, that's why I'm a big supporter of the uh, release the Ayer cut hashtag. Hopefully he'll get a chance to release the full vision of what he intended for this movie. Coming in at number 7 on this list is the theatrical release of Justice League. 
Now, Justice League is not a terrible movie, but what it is is just a very mediocre one. Uh, this film finished in sixth place in all five categories to rack up 15 points. Uh, critics were pretty meh on it. It got a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 45% on Metacritic. Audiences liked it a little bit better with a 71% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 64% on Metacritic. The box office came in at $657 million, which at first sounds pretty good, but when you take into the fact that the budget for this film was about $300 million, yeah, it ended up being a money loser for the studio. This film is just a clash between two competing styles that just don't mix. You have Zack Snyder's dark and grim seriousness and Joss Whedon's Marvel-style humor. This film is plagued by obvious reshoots uh, featuring Henry Cavill's weird lip and a overweight and out-of-shape Ben Affleck who was going through some personal problems during the reshoots, so yeah, his weight actually fluctuates during this film. But that being said, though, the definite highlight of this film was Henry Cavill as Superman. Even though he was in the film for only the second half of this movie, he was great. Uh, I love the scene where he basically punked out the Justice League after he got resurrected, and it was really enjoyable to watch him in the final battle. It's funny how the rest of the league were having so many problems against Steppenwolf and then Superman just comes right in and kicks his ass. So again, at the end of the day, it's not a terrible film, just a very mediocre one. Uh, but I really, really can't wait to see Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max and hopefully we'll then get a much better version, a much more satisfying uh, version of what we got in the theaters. Coming at number six is probably the most divisive comic book movie ever made, and that's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Uh, this movie got 17 points using this system. Critics absolutely hated this film. It got a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 44% on Metacritic. Audiences were pretty mixed. It got a 62% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 69% on Metacritic. Because of the hype, it got $872 million in box office gross. And to this day, it's still the second highest grossing DCEU film, and that's where it got most of its points. The film we got in the theaters was a butchered port. Uh, Warner Brothers basically made Zack Snyder chop out 30 minutes out of his film to get more air times, and it really messed with the movie. Uh, thankfully, a few months later, we did get the Ultimate Edition with the full 30 minutes put back in. And it is a superior film. When I watch Batman v Superman, I don't even bother with the theatrical cut. I just watch the Ultimate Edition. Um, this movie is very flawed, you know, and I understand. But I still enjoy this film. Um, now, there are things to criticize about it. I'm not a fan of Batman killing people. Um, I know what they were going for with Jesse Eisenberg, but his take didn't really work for uh, Lex Luthor. And, of course, the whole Martha scene was just ridiculous. If he had just said... Uh, please save my mom, you need to save my mom, it would have worked just as well. But there was still a lot of fun to be had in this film. Seeing the Trinity together for the first time was great, uh, Wonder Woman was a great scene stealer, and I love all the action scenes, you know, I, I liked the fight between Batman and Superman, I enjoyed the warehouse rescue, and, and of course the final battle with Doomsday. So, it may not be a masterpiece, but I don't think it's a dumpster fire either, I think it's a very flawed but enjoyable film. So coming at number five is the most recent DCEU movie to be released, and that's Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. This film got 20 points using this system. It scored very well with critics. Uh, it scored a 78% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 60% on Metacritic. Audience, it scores a 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. What hurt this film is that it came in last place in two categories. The Metacritic user score was only at 54%, and the total box office was only about $201 million. Uh, that's primarily due to the fact that this film was rated R. It's the only R-rated DCU film. Now, I understand that what I'm about to say is probably going to make a lot of people upset, and I do apologize for that because this film does have a very strong fan base. This is my least favorite DCEU film. Um, I was all for a Harley Quinn solo film, and that's what we kind of got here, but we kind of didn't. It was, I don't know, it's definitely the weirdest DCEU film to date. I think that the whole emancipation angle didn't really work because Joker wasn't in the film. 
Now, I understand that was kind of beyond their control, and they tried to substitute Joker with Black Mask, but if you really wanted to do the whole emancipation angle, I thought it would have worked better if Joker was in the film and was actually the main villain, and you actually see Harley Quinn break free from Joker instead of the breakup happening off-screen. Because remember the last time we saw Joker and Harley Quinn together at the end of Suicide Squad, they were very happily in love together. The Birds of Prey are really shoved to the background. You don't get to know them very well, especially Huntress, which was very unfortunate because she actually did come off as a very interesting character. Another problem I had with this film was that Harley Quinn was the narrator, and this film used kind of like a non-linear style where she was jumping back and forth between different scenes. Does she have fourth wall breaking powers? I mean, that works for Deadpool because he's a fourth wall breaker, but if not, then Harley's narrating scenes that she would not have any knowledge of, and it was just very confusing. And they also said that Harley was the real genius, and Joker was just taking all the credit, and I hate it when they do that, where they feel like the only way to prop up a female character is to reduce the male character. That's what they did to Superman, that Supergirl show, and that's why I stopped watching it. Um, there is some good stuff in this film. I did like the look. I did like the final third act. But, unfortunately, at the end of the day, they're just it just didn't quite come together the way I wanted. I do appreciate the DCEU getting experimental, but in this case, it's just an experiment that just didn't quite work for me. But, hey, that's just my opinion. But on this list, it did come in fifth place. Coming at number four on this list is the very first DCEU movie, and that's Man of Steel. Man of Steel racked up 24 points using this system. Critics were pretty mixed on it. It got a 56% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 55% on Metacritic. Audiences, though, did seem to enjoy this film more. It got a 75% on both Rotten Tomatoes and the Metacritic user score. Box office ranked in $668 million. Now, this is my personal favorite DCU movie. I really, really enjoy this film. It's one of these films I can watch over and over again and still like it just as much. Now, what people need to understand is that Christopher Reeve was very iconic as Superman. And they tried to recreate that image with Superman Returns, but it didn't really work. So, they needed to do something different. And I really appreciated that. I really wanted a more darker, more serious take on Superman. Uh, I thought the first two acts were done very well. Uh, I will admit, though, that I thought the third act it got a little too carried away with the destruction, so I get why people were offended by that, I understand. Uh, but it didn't bother me all that much. Anyway, I thought that Henry Cavill did a great job as Superman. He was really allowed to make this character his own. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed this film. I, I thought the Smallville battle was one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen in comic book movies. I really enjoyed that battle. I will admit, after that, things do kind of go downhill. But I do hope, and with Henry Cavill coming back to the DCEU, that eventually we do get to see a sequel to Man of Steel because he definitely deserves it. Coming at number three is Aquaman. Aquaman totaled 27 points using this formula. It got a 65% on Rotten Tomatoes with the critic score and 74% with the audience score. Didn't do as well on Metacritic as it got a 55% with the critics and a 70% with the users. The big winner though was the box office. It has $1.148 billion. It's the only DCEU movie to this day to gross over a billion. This is just a big, dumb, fun, silly action movie. Uh, it's like a, an Indiana Jones or Jason and the Argonauts film. Um, it's just so much fun. It's so over the top. I do respect the fact that the director James Wan just said to hell with it Let's just just let's go crazy. Let's just have a big fun time While Jason Momoa is not the best actor ever. He's just so darn charismatic It's just so much fun to watch him. It's big. It's bright. It's colorful. It's like an anime It's it's just a really fun time. You know, it's, it's nothing too serious You know, it's not gonna be classic art. We're not talking about Citizen Kane here but Aquaman is just a big, dumb, fun film, and it's a good time to spend two and a half hours. So yeah, uh, it, it's a good movie. So coming at number two is Shazam. Shazam scored 31 points. It scored a 90% on Rotten Tomato critic score, and 82% on the audience score, and on Metacritic, it got a 71% for the critics, and a user score of 76%. 
Unfortunately, the only place where it didn't do very well was the box office. Box office, it got $366 million, which is second from the bottom. I do want to dispel this one belief about Shazam. There are so many people online right now trying to call Shazam a failure or a flop or a dud. Shazam was profitable. It made $366 off a $100 million budget, so it did make money. And more importantly that, it's getting a sequel and a spinoff. Enough with this whole, it was a box office flop narrative because it wasn't. I personally think Shazam is one of the best uh, comic book movies in the past uh, decade. It's such a good film from the writing to the acting. Um, you have appropriate humor, a uh, great family drama, and it has, in my opinion, the best third act of all the DCEU films. And there was a surprisingly good amount of horror in this film, thanks to the Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah. I thought this movie was fantastic. My wife and I saw this movie in the theater four times. I've never done that before with a movie. And I can't wait to see the sequel. And I can't wait to see him go up against um, Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam. So yeah, Shazam is a fantastic film. It's also ranked number two on my own personal subjective list. I have it right behind Man of Steel. So yeah, I mean, Shazam is an outstanding film. If you haven't seen this movie, go check it out. It's, it's a damn good time. Finally, coming in at number one on our objective ranking list is probably no surprise either, uh, still the crown jewel of the DCEU, and that's Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman pretty much outdistanced all the other films. It scored 38 points. It scored uh, first place in the Rotten Tomato critic score, in the audience score, in the Metacritic score and the Metacritic user score. The only spot where it didn't score first place was in box office, where it racked in $821 million, which was only good enough for third place. I mean, what can you say? This was just a great film. Uh, director Patty Jenkins did a wonderful job telling the uh, fish out of water story. There was such great chemistry between Gal Gadot and Chris Pine. Uh, the No Man's Land scene was amazing. Uh, third act is a little funky, but other than that, it's a very, very solid film. A great, a great movie, up and down. This really was the movie that's kind of saved the DCEU. So, yeah. I mean, it was a great film. I can't wait to see the sequel, Wonder Woman 84. Now, do I think the movie's a little overrated? I kind of do. I still think it's a great film, but I only have it in third place on my list. But when it comes to objective rankings, you know, you can't argue with the numbers. It definitely deserves that number one spot with how successful that it was. So, yeah, it was very much deserving of that first place spot. So there you have it. There's my attempt to objectively rank the eight DCU films. Please let me know what you guys think of this list, if you agree with it or not, and give me your list of your favorite DCU films. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care, and have a nice day.